was not showing अच्छा उनका कैमरा ऑन नहीं है वेल फ्रेंड्स वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट पोस्ट लंच सेशन एंड दिस इज वन आवर स्पेशल सेशन and uh, we have with us uh, natalia pelexianoka botiriska she is a, a prominent uh, journalist and author from ukraine she live in kiev which has been uh, a point uh, of uh, attention of the people all over the world and is still uh, we know that the conflicting situation is still there and whole world is affected by this crisis uh, and uh, on my special request Uh, Natalia Butiriska uh, has been kind enough to accept my invitation to this conference and uh, she will discuss today uh, the impact of uh, the global impact uh, of the advent uh, of uh, the russian the hello global impact of this russian ukraine war and uh, how the people have suffered in ukraine during this period and she will discuss in detail Uh, uh her experience and she is uh, in kiev at present and she will be live from kiev so without wasting any time i request uh, uh, natalia butiriska to uh, deliver her uh, speech and to the delegates of this conference yes please Uh, hello thank you very much for this opportunity and i would like to ask you about permission of demonstration my uh, slides can i do it demonstration uh yeah madam we will make you host uh, you, then you can share it by yourself mm -hmm. thank you mm, uh, one second madam we are just doing it Uh -huh. uh, madam you are, you can share now uh -huh. yes. now you can share uh -huh. okay do you see my presentation Uh, just a moment. Uh -huh. Can you can you see? Yeah, madam, it's visible. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Great. Uh -huh. Okay. Dear lady and gentlemen, uh, dear organizers, dear participants and guests, it is a great honor for me. to take part in today's conference thank you very much for the opportunity to talk about the global consequences of russian aggression against ukraine russian aggression against ukraine caused complex threats to the whole world it undermines international order destabilizes the situation in the world caused security threats 
first of all, in the energy and economic spheres. Russia caused global instability, which was felt in different parts of the world, in the countries with different levels of development. Russia is using disinformation, uh, is trying to justify its unprovoked war against Ukraine with various reasons. For a long time, the Russian authorities tried to create a mess in the eyes of international community about the existence of a threat that allegedly forced it to start a war. However, the strange thing is that nine years ago, it was Russia who occupied part of the Ukrainian territory. And now it was the same Russia that attacked Ukraine again, not the other way around. After the occupation of Crimea and the holding of so-called referendum, the Russian Federation accepted the... Ma'am, your audio is not clear. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry Please. because we have a problem with uh, internet. Now it is better. It is better now? Uh, speak from a distance. Uh, just a moment. From mic. Uh -huh, okay, okay. It it is now better. I'm sorry. It is better. Uh, yeah, better, better. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, we have uh, problems with electricity and internet. It's uh, bit, uh, yes. Uh, I will um, go. Uh, so, despite the lack of international recognition of annexation, Putin has used blackmail with a full-scale war against Ukraine uh, if it wants to take back its territory. German Chancellor Angela Merkel and French President François Hollande mediate that war and pressed for territorial uh, conce uh, concession from Ukraine to appease Putin. As you can see, the convenience of world community with the actions of the Russian authorities led to deeper negative consequences and did not stop the further invasion of the sovereign territory of Ukraine. The, the current full-scale war was a continuation of the Russian president's plan to restore the former Soviet Union. Russia has no le legal reasons for aggression against an independent country, so it spread disinformation. Some of narratives are as follows. Russia is at war with NATO, not with Ukraine. But Ukraine is not a member of NATO and could not become and due to the member states pair of entering Russia. In 2008, Ukraine has denied the process perspective of joint NATO. Ukraine is not a member of any military alliance. Russia violated the only guarantees that Ukraine had, the Budapest Memorandum. Ukraine agreed to give up one of the largest nuclear arsenals in the world in return for uh, these guarantees. Instead, we received a loss of territory and a full-scale invasion. Uh, the next one is nazification of the Ukraine people. For a long time, Russia has worked to create the image of Nazis, of Ukrainian soldiers and volunteers who went to def defend their homeland. In this way, Russia tried to justify their illegal actions and the annexation of Crimea and Donbass and the full-scale war to the world public. At the same time, Russia itself refuted this mess when they helped the exchange of fighters of the Azov battalion, whom they particularly demonized, and returned them to Ukraine. No evidence of the crimes that Russia Federation tried to spread about fascism and Nazism in Ukraine was found. That was to be expected. 
fighting birds and mosquitoes. Russian diplomats at the UN talk about the presence of uh, bio laboratories in Ukraine. According to them, infected birds and insects are created in these laboratories to poison Russians. The coronavirus pandemic has shown that viruses could affect all people despite their countries of living and nationalities. It is not possible to affect only Russians and get around Ukrainians. From the point of view of science, four statements look inappropriate, but Russia is constantly trying to distract the attention of international organizations and governments with manipulative accusations so that the world talk less about missile attacks on Ukrainian cities and villages, the killing on, of civilians, and the destruction of civilian infrastructure. Dirty bomb, Russia often used the tool of shifting blame to Ukraine to justify its own actions, spreading information that Ukraine is allegedly manufacturing a so-called dirty bomb. It has become one of the ways to justify its own nuclear blackmail and threats with nuclear weapon. Ukraine immediately invited representative of the uh, IAEA to its nuclear facilities who found no signs of the creation of a dirty bomb. The Ukrainian authorities are maximally open to cooperate with the international community so that the mysterious accusations are immediately verified by, uh, by the relevant international organization. There are just a few examples of disinformation from the Russia side. But I want to draw your attention uh, to the fact that there are many ways to spread IPSO in the world today. Unfortunately, hybrid methods of influence in police are becoming an important tool in modern wars that justify crimes and influence uh, hello. Iran of people. Excuse me, please uh, speak from a distance from microphone. Your, uh, your voice is not clear here. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Russia occupied and illegally. Yes, now it is better. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's problem with internet, I'm so sorry. A little bit distance uh, will make your voice more clear. Okay. Russia occupies an illegal another part of the territory of an independent state. Russia has included in its constitution territories to which it has no legal right and which it does not possess. The Russian authorities are uh, uh, appropriating the territory of an independent sovereign state. Also, 30 years ago, Russia recognized the independence of Ukraine and its borders. A number of bilateral documents were signed between Russia and Ukraine, which confirmed the absence of territorial claims uh, to each other. Russia has violated the UN chapter and also ignores the resolutions of the UN General, uh, General Assembly, which require it to withdraw troops from the territory of Ukraine and stop hostilities. Russia uh, justified its actions by protecting the right of Russia speaking citizens. However, in Ukraine, the Russian language, like the languages of other ethnic minorities is not oppressed. No international organization has recorded violations of democratic rights on the territory of Ukraine. There is another aspect. The Russian language was artificially planted 
on our territory through the dist destruction uh, of Ukraine during the times of the Russian Empire and the Soviet Union. As a result, the Russian language and culture is a consequence of the colonial past, which Russia still uses as a pretext for territorial claims against Ukraine. We also hear similar claims regarding the Baltic countries or Kazakhstan, for example. Currently, there are another signs of genocide in the territories captured by, by the Russian army. On the occupied territories, many cases were recorded of people being detained for using the Ukrainian language. Imagine this happened on Ukrainian territory. And this, uh, this people are Ukrainian. Ukrainian textbooks were destroyed in schools and libraries. And parents who refused to teach their children in Russian were threatened to con with confiscation their children. Local residents talk about abuse of people, first of all, teachers of Ukrainian language and history, journalists, activists, who took an active national uh, Ukrainian position. Many graves of civilians with signs of tor uh, torture due to support for Ukraine are found in the liberated territory. With its aggression, Russia is setting a precedent in the world when the border of another state can be changed by force, when former colonizers use historical, linguistic, and cultural factors to restore their influence, when the right of force becomes the basis for laying the path of development for other independent states, when the language and culture of one nation can nowadays become a reason for torture and murder, when international law is completely ignored and the right of veto in the UN Security Council is used to avoid punishment for illegal actions. Russia, as a, as a state with largest nuclear arsenal in the world, uses nuclear blackmail as a way to put pressure on Ukraine and the whole world. The Russian army could not achieve military success at the front, despite the numerical superiority of the troops and long-term preparation for the war in Ukraine. The Ukrainian army has the potential to return its occupied territories. The Russian government is afraid of defeat at the front because it can cause serious consequences inside the country. So it constantly threats to use nuclear weapons. Such irresponsible behavior of Russia carries a number of serious threats. The use of nuclear weapons against Ukraine can lead to unpredictable consequences as well as start negative processes in the world. The use of nuclear weapons against another country to achieve illegal territorial goals will lead to chaos in the international security architecture. Russia aggression against Ukraine and nuclear threats from Moscow have already become an example of the normalization of the use of nuclear blackmail. Recently, we have seen increased provocations and nuclear threats from the North Korean regime towards the US and its partners. In this way, Pandora's box is opened in the wall. Russia's aggression against Ukraine surfaces another argument for Kim Jong-un and the governments of other authoritarian regimes in the ineffectiveness of international guarantees as happened in the case of Ukraine. The aggression of the Russian Federation against Ukraine threatens the 
significance of nuclear weapons as a deterrent tool. This could lead, lead to an uncontrolled nuclear arms race among many countries of the world. Russia purposefully creates nuclear danger on the territory of Ukraine. At the beginning of the war, Russia took cease two nuclear plants on the territory of Ukraine, the Chernobyl nuclear plant and the Zaporizhia nuclear plant. After the expulsion of Russian troops from the Kiev region, Ukraine was able to regain control over the Chernobyl station. However, Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is still under the control of the Russian army and causes a potential threat to all of Europe. Back in September, the International Atomic Energy Agency mission conducted an inspection and adopted resolution requiring the Russians to immediately stop all aggressive action at the Zaporizhia plant and then any other nuclear facilities. The Director General of the IAEA, Rafael Grossi, called on the Russians to withdraw the troops and weapons located on the territory of the plant and to create a nuclear safety zone about, around the Zaporizhia plant. Russia not only ignores the IAEA decision and refuses to create a demilitarized zone around the plant. At the beginning of October, Putin issued a decree of the illegal takeover of the station to the ownership of the Russian Federation. At the same time, station employees are forced to obtain a Russian passport and seen employment contract with the Russian state corporation Rosato. On Ukrainian personnel is made psychological pressure. At the end of September, uh, the Russians detained the general director of the Zaporizhia station and took him to an unknown destination. The leadership of the IAEA was involved in his dismissal. During this time, Russia tried several times to arbitrarily disconnect the Zaporizhia station from the Ukrainian power system and connect it to the Russia power system through the occupied territory. For this purpose, the personnel of the Russian Rosatom arrived at the station and supervises its work. Rosatom was established an illegal corporation to manage the Polisha station. So the Russia Federation is trying to deprive Ukrainian important energy facility. The Russian army is constantly shelling the station due to the constant loss of electricity and inability to control safety at the station. Ukraine decided to shut down all power units. On November 20th, Russia once again shelled the premises and territory of the nuclear plant, demanding the equipment and infrastructure necessary for the restoration and startup of station in the future. One gets the impression that Russia understands that it can be pushed out of Ukrainian territories, especially after Kherson. So it is trying to cause maximum damage to the plant so that it cannot function and produce energy for Ukraine in the future. It should be noted that this is the largest nuclear power plant in Europe. A nuclear power plant is a very dangerous tool in the hands of Russian military. Due to the lack of military success, the Russian authorities are blackmailing Ukraine in the war with a very dangerous nuclear disaster. According to uh, ecologists, in the case of explosion, the area of potential threat to the ex exclusion zone 
will be critical kilometers. Its spread will affect neighboring countries, in particular the Russian Federation itself. But this does not stop the Russians from their risky actions. The environmental is another victim of Russia aggression. Today, almost 30% of Ukraine is mined. In terms of scale, it's like two territories of Austria. Fertile soils are contaminated with harmful substances from various types of weapon, uh, sewage blasts, and enterprises. Two million square meters of land are littered with the remains of destroyed objects and ammunition. Harmful substances are released into the atmosphere every day by the uh, indiscriminate detonation of oil reports and chemical uh, enterprises. Nowadays, more than 680,000 tons of oil products have burned during the shell, but these are not final calculations. The Russians dug uh, trenches in the exclusion zone near the Chernobyl nuclear plant, which led to the release of radioactive substances into the air. More than uh, 23,000 hectares of forest were burned by rocket and projectors. It will take more than 10 years to restore them. Russia flooded dozens of coal mines on the territory of Donetsk region, which is occupied. Among them, for example, the Yunkom mine, in which an underground nuclear explosion was carried out in 1979. The lack of control over the consequences of this flooding may lead to the penetration of nuclear residues into the rivers of the Donetsk region and through them to the Azov and Black Sea. As a result of Russian aggression, six million domestic animals died. At least 50,000 um, uh, 50, dolphins were killed in the Black Sea. Hundreds of thousands, even millions of wild animals may die. Today, there is not many talk in the world about the environmental consequences of Russian aggression against Ukraine. But unfortunately, they will uh, have a negative impact not only on Ukraine, but also on the world in general. According to the results of the Food and Agriculture pro Program of the United Nations, in uh, 2021, Ukraine was the leader of the world sunflower oil market with a share of about 45%. The third producer of corn, barley, and rapeseed. It is the sixth largest producer of grain in the world and accounted for a tenth of world export exporters. After the start of the full-scale invasion, Ukrainian ports were completely blocked by the Russian army and navy. This made export impossible and led to an increase of world food prices. According to the Food and Agriculture Program, before the war, the Ukraine agriculture sector provided Ukraine with 20% of GDP and more than 40% of export revenues. It was possible to unlock the port for the grain initiative with the help of the UN and Turkey on July 22 this year. From Ju July to the end of October, Ukraine exported uh, um, 30 million tons of grain by sea. 9.3 million, by, by sea it was 9.3 million. At the same time, last year, export amounting to 19 
0.4 million tons. Volumes could be increased now if Russia did not artificially slow down the operation of the export corridor. In addition to exporting agricultural products to world markets, Ukraine was one of the main suppliers of food to countries with a food deficit, according to the terminology of the United Nations. For example, supplies of Ukrainian wheat to Eritrea amounted to 47%. Currently, part of the supplies of the grain corridor also goes through the UN food program. This accounted to 20% of current exports. In addition, the president of Ukraine proposed a grain from Ukraine in initiative to which every country in the world can contribute to provide food aid to the poorest country. The Russian invasion not only led to the secession of Ukrainian export. Greenhouses, warehouses, processing facilities, and irrigation system were destroyed. The Russian army is deliberately destroying grain elevators and port infrastructure. According to prim preliminary date, Today, the loss of agriculture already amounts to 25% of the value of the industry be before the war. The Russian occupation and mining of Ukrainian fertile lands led to, de to decrease in cu cultivated areas this year. Next year, Ukraine will be forced to reduce external export of agricultural products by 10, 12 million tons of grain crops. In addition, this year, Ukrainian farmers suffered economic losses due to export problems and rising price of energy resource and logistics. Next year, Ukrainian farmers may, may face financial problems for the solving campaign and may also reconsider the visibility of growing certain types of products for export and reduce solving. In this way, the overall share of Ukraine products on the world market may decrease, which may lead to an increase in world price for agricultural products. About 50% of Ukrainian energy infrastructure was destroyed by the strikes of Russian missiles and Iranian drones. Russia regularly blows up power plants, transformers, dams, electricity supply lines, water supply facilities throughout Ukraine. Usually, Ukraine exports its own electricity to Europe. Now, it is important to help Europe reduce consumption of Russia resource. At the same time, it became an important source of export income during the war for Ukraine. In recent months, the export of electricity reached industrial scale and allowed Ukraine to earn more than 1 billion US dollars. However, on October 10th and 11th, Russia launched a massive missile attack and destroyed more than eight power plants and a large number of substations. Currently, missile attacks on energy infrastructure have become regular. This caused a shortage of electricity in country itself and forced to stop export to the Europe. The energy crisis caused by the Russian Federation aims to cause social discontent within the EU in order to stop economic and military support for Ukraine. And within Ukraine itself, increase the pressure on the population and the authorities, which are not in the mood for concession to the Russian Federation. Russia is deliberately creating energy problems for Ukraine and European countries before winter, which is usually cold in our continent. Russia is trying to deprive people of heat, water, access to, uh, to the internet. 
This destroys the Ukrainian economy, increases the number of un, uh, unemployment people. The lack of uh, communications and heat may cause an additional wave of Ukrainian refugees to Europe. Now we can say that it is goal of Russia. Russia has often used refugees as a tool to destabilize Europe. At last of such facts was the centralized transportation by Russian and Belarusian planes of group of refugees from Syria to Belarus and creation of a crisis on the Polish border. Ukrainians are forced to leave their country not because of problems with the authorities of, of its own country, social problems, or oppression with, within the country. Ukrainians are expelled from their land by the Russians. Today, five or six million women, children, and all people from Ukraine are in Europe because of Russian aggression. Another four or five million Ukrainians are displaced within Ukraine. They left the occupied territories or the war zone and live in safer cities of Ukraine. Russia is putting serious pressure on the economy of Ukraine and European countries due to such a large wave of refugees. For Ukraine, this poses a big problem for the future. Many children and young people who currently live in Europe are forced to adapt there and go to school, institute. Many of them can stay there forever, and it is a big loss for other countries. So Ukraine views losing pe young people and children for engine of development in the future. Russia aggression led to the destruction of entire cities and villages, the reconstruction of which will take decades. This means that dozens of families in Ukraine were left without housing and work. Russia aggression has created the biggest refugee crisis in Europe in decades. This will have serious consequences both for Ukraine and its economy and for the European economy. Accordingly, for the global economy in general, given the place of the EU in global economic development. The consequences of the Russian war against Ukraine have become felt all over the world. Many countries of the world mistakenly considered it, it a local conflict at the beginning of the war until they felt it its echoes in their own pockets. Recently, many countries and their governments have called for an end of the war. Ukraine is more, most interested in ending the war, which brings death and destruction every day. However, the war should not demand that Ukraine give up its territories, its people, its democratic choice in order to satisfy the illegal claims of Russia and Putin personally, as has been happening recently. Peace must be fair. Therefore, it is necessary to demand from Russia to stop the war. The war must make Russia pay for its crime in order to avoid legalization of the rights of force and threats by other countries against weak neighbors in the future. Russia was forgiven for seizing part of Georgia, the occupation of Ukrainian Crimea, Donbass. This led to an increase in its appetite. The Ukrainian authorities insist on the liberation of Ukraine territory, this rest restoration of territorial integrity, and sovereignty. Also, Ukraine initiates the creation of a special tribunal for the crime of Russian aggression, as well as the creation of an international mechanism for reparation for the war damages. The UN General Assembly adopted a resolution to support this mechanism. This is important from the point of view of the protection 
of international law and the functionation of modern international system born after the Second World War. Wars should not be become the basis for achieving one's own goals in the modern world. The law of force should not become the basis of modern international relations. The leader of states, all whose, who have committed crimes against other countries or ordinary citizens must be punished. This will be a deterrent to others to seek to impose they will to other peoples and countries by force. Thank you for your attention, and I will be glad to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Do not work here. Thank you for your detailed presentation on the global consequences of Russian aggression. And I think you have talked about uh, different uh, dimension of it. Uh, for example, the role of United Nations in this uh, crisis situation, nuclear threats given by Russia time to time, blocking of ports and crisis of food grain in different parts of the world, then energy crisis in Europe and refugee problem uh, you have pointed out in your speech. I think uh, this uh, A speech is uh, very thoughtful and uh, it uh, might have uh, raised certain questions and observations uh, among the audience. So now I invite uh, the questions uh, and observations from the audience and uh, you may ask Natalia Butiraska uh, uh, what however you want to ask the audience please well uh, let the others be ready with uh, their questions, uh, but uh, I have one uh, thing in my mind that uh, because uh, the, this uh, war is uh, about now uh, almost ninth months are over and uh, Ukraine's position is uh, better than what it was two, three months back. And Russia is uh, also using very, uh, you know, uh, weapons which are very harmful, not only for environment, but also uh, making a lot of casualty and uh, destroying the uh, infrastructure in Ukraine. So, how these things uh, are affecting the society, in fact, uh, I am more interested in that. And uh, the social structure has been badly uh, affected in the sense in, that some members of the family migrated from there to other countries and some are still there. So the family is affected, kinship is affected, work is affected. So in what uh, condition the society is, if you can highlight this, uh, apart from the consequences which you have discussed, I think the uh, audience will be more interested in that. Mm -hmm. 
uh, you see this war affects uh, first of all affects society because Ukraine was a very peaceful country where lived about 40 million of people and a lot of children. And now we couldn't we couldn't see, we couldn't imagine that what what is the war today? Because Russia used really a lot of weapon against civilians every day. For example, uh, I I couldn't make my plans about today. And my family also couldn't make plans about today. But today we should to go work. Yeah. My son go uh, should to go to the institute, for example, and so on. And another children should to go to the children garden. Now we re renewed our life because when war the start, all, all social life ended. So we, we stopped all our life and a uh, uh, lot of families goes abroad or another part of Ukraine to the west part of Ukraine and lived there uh, because because of uh, uh, Russian aggression in Kyiv region, in North region. But after Kyiv and North region was liberated, a lot of families came back to their houses because we couldn't st stay and uh, do nothing. We should to work and we should to work uh, uh, because, uh, because Ukraine needs to uh, to live and our army need our money so for example i uh, i and uh, my family and i we came came back to key and started to live in the conditions of war because russia can shell Kiev, for example or another cities all that time with rockets so i couldn't think how i will go to my uh, workplace tomorrow because of Ru Russia can shell rockets and I should to stay uh, somewhere because of danger. Another problem is caused Russia destroyed our electricity facility. And uh, in Ukraine, many cities and villages, we don't have electricity for five times, for four times. Now I don't have electricity, but uh, thanks God I have internet and can speak with you. So it's a problem for people because I couldn't think if I can work uh, after one hour because of problems with electricity. It's really, it's re really very, very, um, um, un uncomfortable, it's some kind of pressure on all people. But I would like to say that Ukraine people know that now this war, this war about our existence as a country, as a nation. And we will work, we will um, we will work and we will fight and I, to our uh, to, to our uh, victory and I don't know if uh, some someone of you saw the reportage of Kherson city which was liberated uh, one, one uh, week ago maybe uh, of Russian um, Russian militaries. People of Kherson don't have electricity, water, uh, and and uh, uh, internet. Don't have. And now they uh, they also don't have. Our authorities try to repair all this infrastructure. But people of this region, after uh, eight months of occupation, told we would like this electricity with water, with internet, but we want to lie, live without Russians. It's, it's, a, it's a nature of our, of our struggle because 
um, this war is not uh, about our comfortable life. This war about uh, Ukrainian at all, about our possibility to speak with Ukrainian language, to live, uh, to live with our willingness, and to to uh, to make to make our country according to our uh, dreams. Well, excuse me, I have some observations. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I'm... Professor Rajesh Mishra, please take him on screen. Yeah. Uh, it was really very uh, detailed, but at the same time, precise uh, uh, description of the situation going on in Ukraine. Uh, I, I want to raise three three issues only one is uh, what I, when i studied uh, the history of ukraine i found that ukraine for more than 1000 years has been under some kind of colonialism initially colonialism by poland and lithuania regime thereafter by russian jar, jar regime and thereafter stalin's time and even Brezhnev, who was Ukrainian basically, but during Brezhnev, a lot of Russification, Russiafication happened in England. Yeah, sorry, in Ukraine. So my first observation is about uh, about uh, that. Uh, even now, I, uh, as far as I know, uh, about uh, more than eighteen percent population is Russian-speaking population. Russian-speaking population in Ukraine. So uh, there is some kind of, uh, uh, some kind of, uh, I mean, as propaganda suggests, that there's some kind of uh, uh, dominance over this Russian-speaking population or people of origin, having origin of Russian in Ukraine. Recently, two days back, one day back, there was uh, some kind of, uh, uh, some kind of a raid on uh, in Kyiv on the Orthodoxy Church. So there is some kind of a struggle between Russian Orthodoxy Church and Ukrainian uh, uh, Church. So one question would be about what is happening on this issue in Ukraine nowadays, because mm -hmm. we are not uh, we, we are not knowing this one situation. Mm -hmm. There's another observation about you very rightly pointed out. The, the kind of crisis uh, Ukrainian population is undergoing. But uh, recently, I have, that also two, three days back, I came to know that WHO regional director, he said that 10 million people would be facing a crisis of health during this winter. And this is a recent, very, very, very very, uh, I mean, 25% of the population of Ukraine is going to face health crisis. So on this front, what is happening in Ukraine? Because I, I understand that fridge, fridges are not working, operation theaters are not working, hospitals are not working because of this energy attack of the Russia on Ukraine. This is another issue I, I wanted to know. The, the last one I wanted to know about about, about, uh, I mean, this is really related with the, the new, what, what is known as new world order. Because bravery of Ukrainian people, Ukrainian army and people, common people, they have pushed uh, Putin or Russian attack uh, uh, nowadays, and Kherson is under control. So I want to know, that what kind of feeling it gives to the people of Ukraine that they, they want to fight it out up to when and why NATO or American people, uh, I mean, other people, those who claim uh, that they are more humanitarian, why they are not intervening in, in the war? Of course, they are supporting, there are hardly any doubt, but this is the time to intervene because 
40 million people facing a humanitarian crisis. If you do not intervene now, uh, when you will intervene? So on these three issues, I want to know your observations. Mm -hmm. I will start for uh, your last uh, last uh, question, and then we go, we go on. Okay. Uh, Russia used NATO and uh, NATO as a uh, as as a uh, um, one of its um, use NATO with a reason of this war that uh, NATO is. Uh, using uh, using their uh, using the NATO is a security uh, issue of Russia. That's why NATO country they don't want uh, to enter in this war. They don't have any reason because Ukraine is not a NATO country. Ukraine. Uh, so they they don't must uh, enter to this war, and another one they don't want uh, war with Russia when NATO enter, and it will be real disaster in all Europe continent. And also, NATO is is a, a organization of thirty countries, and. Uh, some of them don't want uh, uh, to enter in this war, for example, and uh, some of them is so close with Russia, for example, Nigeria or Hungary. So it's a, it's a big problem uh, that uh, they don't want, uh, they, they don't agree with uh, enter. But uh, countries like Poland, like Czech, like Slovak, like uh, Baltic countries, they were under Soviet, Soviet. Uh, I couldn't say occupation, but Soviet. They they know under Soviet rule, and okay. they know know exactly what mean Soviet rule for people uh, for living and so on. And they afraid of Russia very, very much. So these countries is a mechanism, is agent of NATO to help Ukraine. Because if you remember, France on jo uh, or and German, they were very slow countries to help Ukraine when even the war started because of business. Uh, this Russia because of afraid of war after the second world war they, they remember that it, it's very disastrous yes so uh, Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian very grateful for uh, European countries for NATO countries for EU countries for another countries around the world who helped us with humanitarian aid, with military aid, but we know exactly that this war is about us and we should to fight by ourselves. No, mm -hmm. nobody will fight for our um, independence, sovereignty, and no way. And also this is uh, some, something like signal for other countries. We very strong, be very strong in this uh, time, in this uh, international uh, situation, and be prepared for a very unpredictable situation. And so, <laughs> yeah, that's one. Another question about, about language. Russian language really is very uh, very popular in our uh, country because of colonial, because of historical uh, issues. As many people of Ukraine used this language because of their because their parents also used its language. Many people used Russian language because in Soviet Union uh, they made something like a stereotype that Russian language is a language of very literacy, very educated people. 
but Ukrainian language, it's a language of villages, village and villages okay. living people. Only the west part of Ukraine uh, uh, used Ukrainian language because this part was um, uh, uh, this part um, was put to Soviet Union uh, uh, in uh, in 1939 19, uh, 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 19, 30, after Rob Ribbentrop and uh, Molotov. Uh, agreement. This part uh, okay. was very Ukrainian centric, first okay. part of Ukraine. But this uh, part was very close to Russia. Lots of Russians entered to Ukraine and uh, working in the plant in the, in the east of Ukraine. So it's, it's historically made that Russian language was used very, very uh, was used in in uh, in Ukraine. But uh, the but but uh, I would like to say you that after Ukraine get its uh, independence, many people changed their mind. They mean so, so itself by not like uh, the Soviet people, for example, or Russian people, because it is uh, because he used uh, Russian language. No, language is language, but mind is. Ukrainian mind, and uh, especially young people, especially young people, they think it, it sounds like Ukrainian who use Russian language historically. For, for example, my husband was born in Donetsk region, and he used Russian language in his life because it's mother language. But I use Ukrainian language because I was born in Vinica region. We live in, we have been living for 20, 20 years and we use two languages in our life. But this issue is not a problem for understanding each other. Okay. Uh, we, we don't want to change each other because of language. It's not important. Important is who you are. How do you see? And uh, this is example that a lot of uh, fighters of Ukraine using Russian language now, but they fight for Ukraine against Russia. Yes, this is, this issue is uh, is very important, and a lot and, and a lot of people who use Russian language they talk. We are Ukrainians. We live in our country, despite we. Uh, we use Russian. We, we know Ukrainian, but mother mother language is Russian. But now a lot of people try to use Ukrainian because they they thought we don't want to speak the same language with our aggressor. And this situation is changing because of this war, war. unfortunately. And about church. Or the church. Yes, in Ukraine uh, we have a lot of uh, churches, especially in west of Ukraine, close to Europe. Rim Catholic is some kind of uh, of a mix of uh, uh, Greece and in, in Catholic religion. Rim Catholic, uh, Ukrainian uh, Orthodox, and Russian Orthodox. For me, I'm Orthodox people, but for me. It's not important in which church I will enter to ask to pray the God. And this is like a policy, like a situation about all Ukrainians. Okay. Uh, because in Soviet Union, Soviet regime closed all churches. Oh, we couldn't enter to the church. And we uh, get this religion uh, education from our uh, grandparents. My grand, my grandmother told me that God is living, and if you have some problems, please ask ask Him. And He told me this uh, this kind of praying. But after Ukraine got sovereignty, Russia tried to use its uh, soft power, so called soft power, through the church inside of Russia 
and inside of another countries like Ukraine. And it is a very good instrument, not for religion, but for improving Russian influence around the Ukraine. And when they speak about problems in, in religion in Ukraine, it's only when Ukraine, Ukraine authorities try to uh, change this situation because through the churches, they put some kind of propaganda about war, about situation, and so on. It's, it's only problem in religion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, Tom Wicker uh, like to uh, share his observations on this issue. Give him mic. Um, yeah, I just wanted to um, firstly just just something that I think needs clarifying and, and speaking as someone who's conducted research on the position of refugees in European societies for the last 15 years. There's absolutely no evidence to support the claim that refugees entering Europe is bad for European economies. Um, and in fact, many European countries have aging populations and are structurally reliant on migrants, um, including, including refugees. So I just think that has to be absolutely responded to and, and refuted. Um, I think we also linking this back and the, the situation in Ukraine to the, the theme of the conference and, and discussions that we've been having about the new world order and, and um, important points that a lot of people have made about a shift from a unipolar world dominated by the United States to a multipolar world. The way I understand what is happening in Ukraine is that it is the fundamental roots of it, and this is not at all to erase the, you know, the responsibility of the Russian government um, for invading Ukraine, but fundamentally what this is about is the result of a military build-up campaign led by the United States pushed through NATO to use their military power to try and desperately prevent their loss of, of their kind of international dominance because they can't exert that power economically anymore, but they still have all this military force. And so we've seen their interventions as part of that campaign in Afghanistan, in Iraq, interventions, you know, less kind of overtly, but very directly in Libya, in Syria, the buildup of kind of military bases surrounding China. And, and so this is, this is part of the situation that has pushed to this confrontation, which then has, you know, has resulted in this invasion by Russia of, of Ukraine. I have huge sympathy for the people of Ukraine, but I think we need to understand that um, bigger picture and, and what this is fundamentally about in order to have an effective, um, effective response, because the response that certainly we see very prevalent from European governments and, and the US government and, and Western media to simply portray this as there's a madman in Moscow who's irrationally invaded another country just actually plays into that whole agenda um, of, um, of, of, of this kind of this war drive, which is being driven by the desperation of uh, you know, the United States in decline. Uh, Russian use this uh, this uh, fact is actually they are fighting with the US and in this case China is um, also um, repeat this um, this this fact that uh, Russia is fighting with the US for because US want to be the uh, only only leader in this war. But um, the nature of Ukrainian um, situation, the nature of Russian-Ukrainian war is um, not about that. Because Russia started press Ukraine in 2004, it was at the time of the first revolution in Ukraine. And when Ukraine tried 
to be a part of the uh, EU and NATO. And it was willingness of Ukrainian people because Ukraine is a country very, very close to Europe. It's a Europe country, the center of Europe. And historically, Ukraine has very close relations with uh, European countries. And it, it was, uh, some hundred years ago when we lived with Lithuanians and Poland, and it's a very essential our willingness to be a part of Europe because Europe is about democracy, about values, about very good standards of li living. And after that, Russia tried to change our political system and put Yanukovych to, uh, as our president. It was, it was completely Russian influence to put Yanukovych. And then uh, after Russia fell with Yanukovych and Ukraine, Ukrainians again tried to, 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 to change this situation in our political circles, Russia, annexed Crimea and Donetsk. And why uh, the US and uh, European countries don't use military forces uh, and uh, in the, that time? Because it was Ukrainian issue, not their issue and their about their relations with Russia. But, uh, but because them don't think about uh, Russia like a country which can uh, make this kind of, uh, of uh, uh, war. And uh, for, uh, in, in the case of Germany and America, personally, he wanted to make business with Russia and uh, and goes on with that uh, because of this uh, inner sea of, uh, of, uh, of the West, we have this situation. Because um, remember, uh, remember Georgia, remember uh, Transylvania, it's uh, uh, Karabakh situation. It's about Russia, about its willingness to have influence on the post-Soviet countries. So yes, it's uh, very, very simple to, to, to speak about, uh, uh, about uh, uh, this war that it's some kind of fighting. I can say that uh, it happened uh, in, in, uh, in, the, in the time when all world is very, very, um, all world is in trouble. <laughs> it, that's that's all. But uh, and and I think because of this trouble, uh, Russia has more um, brave bravery to start full scale war. Because Russia president thought that uh, that uh, West will. Um, this will will not um, um, criticize it. Will not help Ukraine, and will do the same as uh, as the West did nine years ago when Russia started uh, annexation of Ukraine territory and started the war in Ukraine. But it was it was some kind of proxy war. Thank you. Excuse me. Excuse me. One point I want to make that I agree with Natalia on this count because we forget when we say about this is highly debatable. Soviet Union's intervention in Afghanistan in 1970s and not after 1991, when yes. many Soviet republics were liberated or they became independent, then Russian intervention in Chechenia, in Georgia, in other parts of the, I mean, we forget about, this is a policy of omission of negative instances. 
uh, on the part of Russian Federation uh, idea of uh, uh, of uh, making Russia like old yes. Russia when yes. it it was a uh, holding sway all over around. So I mean, for the, I mean, it's highly debatable. I agree with Natalia's position. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I think uh, uh, the, your speech has generated a lot of heat uh, on the audience, uh, connected uh, online as well as here. But uh, due to paucity of time, we have another session. So I have no option except to stop uh, the conversation here. But uh, I am very happy uh, that you accepted my invitation to this conference. It was just an idea to my mind to invite a person from the uh, Ukraine for this uh, particular international conference. And I think that idea has been materialized and now we have conducted a very successful session and we hope that uh, this kind of activities, uh, which is non-conventional activities in and international conferences will continue and we are having our uh, you know attention continuously on ukraine affairs and in india many people are concerned about ukraine society and through media exposure now people are very uh, much aware about the towns of the ukraine kiev lviv kharsen and uh, Mario Paul. So I think that there is, has been great media exposure to uh, Ukraine, which was not earlier and people were not knowing about Ukraine. So this is one, uh, I will say positive side of the conflict that uh, the all over the world people now have their attention on Ukraine. I think in near future, it will have many positive consequences for the Ukrainian society. Another thing I request you to write uh, this, what you have spoke today, uh, then we have a plan to publish it uh, in an edited book. So I think the dimension you have covered in your speech are very relevant and important. And if you can write uh, these on paper, and incorporating the observations and questions, I think it will be a wonderful article for the readers. And I am sorry that uh, what is the problem with audio here? I think uh, many people could not uh, hear you properly, but I think uh, the, the PowerPoint you have presented, it has conveyed what you wanted to speak to great extent. But if you can share some paper, uh, in this regard that, that we will circulate to our audience. So with these words, I am very grateful to you for, to accept my invitation and my organization, Global Research and Educational Foundation India is also very grateful to you to spare your time for our conference. I am very thankful to my friend, uh, Professor Rajesh Mishra, who connected from London to this conference continuously for last four days to make his observations and very relevant observations. And he is one of the leading sociologists of India. Uh, after retirement, he stays at uh, London with his family. So I think it is, was a wonderful and I am very thankful to audience and my young colleagues who are listening you here. But with these words, I uh, again, uh, thank everyone for uh, their contribution making this uh, uh, occasion successful. So thank you, thank you very much. And now this is the time for tea break. I can't invite you on tea, so, but thank you very much. <laughs>